Some new developments about the church abuse scandal. Now, it exploded here in the U.S. last year after a grand jury report in Pennsylvania detailed decades of abuse by more than 300 priests over several decades, with more than 1,000 victims that were identified. Since then, dioceses across the country and throughout our viewing area, they've been publishing lists of priests who have been credibly accused. But the Rockville Center Diocese on Long Island, it's not following suit. Time says it is the only one in New York that has not released a list. Spokesperson for the diocese explained to the Times why they're choosing not to release the names. I want to read part of that statement. Quote, the Diocese of Rockville Center, as a long-standing practice, works closely with law enforcement to make certain that all accusations of child sexual abuse against clergy, credible or not, of which the diocese is aware, are reported. The relevant civil authorities have the names of all clergy known to the diocese who have been accused of sexual abuse of minors. And joining me now is Professor Marcy Hamilton of the University of Pennsylvania. She was very instrumental in the Pennsylvania case. She's also the CEO of Child USA. She's a nationally recognized expert on sexual abuse and child advocacy. Marcy, as always, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Richard. You know, in the times we talked about this, both in the Pennsylvania case and then subsequently, I thought we were getting to a uniform kind of policy where the optional nature of it was going away. I didn't realize, obviously I was wrong, they have these hodgepodge policies where it's really up to the bishop basically to make the call in his particular diocese, and it can vary widely. Um, from diocese to diocese. I, I, I thought that that was put to rest. Clearly, I was wrong. You know, each of the bishops in each diocese has complete control over the names they release or not. I'm not terribly surprised that we're dealing with uh, Rockville Center as one where uh, the names are not being released. Uh, so we really kind of have three levels. We have places like Rockville that aren't releasing any names. We have some dioceses that say they've released all the names, and but the usual tactic is they will release the names of the priests they know everybody else knows uh, have been identified. Uh, they still tend to hold back the names that just they know. You know, the argument that uh, the diocese in Rockland said is, hey, um, we do everything we can to help the victims um, and um, we also work to prevent abuse and we'll give it to the right authorities. But um, it's piling on to just put these names out there. And they cite, Marcy, that a lot of these folks were never charged, let alone convicted of anything. Um, so it would be premature to put the names out there. As you've obviously laid out, a lot of other places don't use the same standard. When they say they've been credibly identified by the church, how comfortable are you that the standards such from a moral or ethical standpoint that these names ought to be out there? Well, it's pretty annoying at this point that we would have any bishop or diocese in the United States that doesn't understand that naming the perpetrating priests is necessary for the general public, not just for the bishops, not just for law enforcement. Uh, and I find it hilarious that they're even beginning to talk about the idea that uh, why should they name priests publicly who haven't been convicted? Well, the reason they weren't is because they covered it up and the statute of limitations expired. And so it's too late to prosecute the list that they have. And so the, the real problem here is getting institutions like the Catholic Church to understand that they have an obligation to the general public to the common good and not just to their own interests. I saw in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, the Archdiocese there initially, and they since did a 180, but initially they said, you know what, we're not going to put out the list here because it could re-traumatize the victims. In fact, I remember there was a case not long ago out of the, the New York area where somebody, when they saw their name again, um, decided you know, that um, all the suppressed pain they had, that it re-traumatized them. Now, I know that's a convenient excuse to not put out the names, but nonetheless, is there a consideration to that, that maybe not every person wants to have this dredged up decades later? 
So that is an old line that I didn't think the bishops would even pick up anymore, uh, that it's all about protecting the victims by not naming the perpetrators. I mean, that's ridiculous. Now, of course, they should not name the uh, victims, but they need to name the perpetrators, and they need to do so for two reasons. The first one is that it is empowering for a victim to hear that the person who ruined their childhood has been named as someone credibly accused. That's empowering to most of the victims. Uh, but the other reason is that a lot of these men, even if they're not in the priesthood anymore, didn't get prosecuted and they're out in the world. How are parents supposed to know who's safe for their children so long as the church will not reveal the names they know about? To that end, why are we still waiting for an institution who has repeatedly shown uh, that they're not looking out for the best interests of the lady, let alone uh, innocent kids um, that they might come in contact with, um, to do the right thing? And by that I mean, look what you did in Pennsylvania. You, you, you forced their hand along, obviously, with the authorities there. Why is this still discretionary? If the list has to be made public to the civil authorities, why can't they just basically take the initiative and say, we're going to put the names out there if the church likes it or not? Well, and some of them have tried that as a public relations stunt, but in Texas, the bishops all said they would release names on a certain date. And within an hour of releasing what they said were their comprehensive lists, five other perpetrators were named by victims in the state. And they knew about them. The bishops knew about these people. So uh, changing the culture of cover-up cannot happen internally. It can only happen through the legal system. So in the state of Pennsylvania, while we have had the most grand jury reports of any state in the United States, we still have backwards and increasingly falling behind the curve on the statute of limitations. Uh, the reason for that is that Republican senators in the state of Pennsylvania are very closely tied to the insurance industry and the bishops. So it's just politics. At this point, lawmakers are making choices. Do we protect the children in our state? Do we let the public know who the perpetrators are? Or do we continue to be part of the problem and cover it up with the bishops? In Pennsylvania, they're covering it up. In New York and New Jersey, pretty soon, it will be impossible for Rockville Center to cover it up because lawsuits will start being filed August 14th under their window legislation. And because of the bravery of the victims, we will start seeing the names in the press. And you've said that before, that um, uh, Mr. Dolan, um, he by delaying this cannot delay the inevitable um, and he would be better served for a host of different reasons uh, morally on at the top of the list but also on a practical level to get the names out rather than them being forced uh, from him um, but we of course will continue to follow that story um, Marcy uh, I wish we finally every time we talk we get some more clarity here uh, but it seems that it, it almost needs to be like an extraction uh, to do what everybody I think thinks is the right thing here but um, I I'm surprised at least it's uh, you know after everything that's come out it it's just so hard to just get this out there when it's going to get out anyway. Well, you know, what the public needs to understand is it's not just the church playing this game. It's the United States Olympic Committee. It's USA Gymnastics. It's boarding schools. It's public schools. Uh, we're not going to end this pandemic until the truth comes out, and that's not going to happen until we legally empower the victims to be the ones who are able to come forward. Until then, you're going to see these kinds of games. Marcy Hamilton, thank you as always. I appreciate it. Thanks. Anytime. All right, everyone, we'll be right back. Please stay with us.